Let's call this meeting to order 603, we'll say. Director Lynn, would you please uh, lead us in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sure. All right. Okay, so let the record show that uh, we do have a quorum, and uh, apparently uh, Director uh, Schwartz is on his way. Uh, Director Rogers is excused tonight. He's working down uh, east. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, agenda. Do we have any additions, deletions? What is that? I know. Oh, I saw it earlier. That's probably Alec right there. Probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. Welcome. Perfect. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> We I just, can, we I just. Can get, get you the next day. No worries, no worries. No worries. <coughs> You're right on time. We're all good. No changes for me. Okay. No, I. All good. I move the uh, agenda be approved as submitted. Second. Well, I'm going to wait till Alan takes over. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Are you good? I'm good. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jeez. Somebody wants you. Really badly. Well, guys, let's uh, take a look at uh, May's uh, meetings, please. Yeah, May's meeting, and uh, see if you've got any adjustments to make. I do. You, I do recall you were uh, you were away. Yes. 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 We discussed that. Where was I? I don't remember. I have to look at my calendar. If you let me know ahead of time, I could tell you. <laughs> I will recuse myself. Okay. I'm good. All right, so am I. Since I didn't attend the meeting. So all in favor for uh, the uh, meeting of uh, uh, May 14th minutes? So moved. I so I abstain. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Very good. Okay, Alex, you've got your just in time. You want to take us through the financials? Well, there are no financials for my Oh, okay. Call because we're deferring them until July. Okay. Okay. Remind me why we're doing that. Because uh, Marie is out. Okay. 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 Speaking of Cheshire, uh, Marie's doing well. She came in for about an hour today to prepare the checks, uh, but uh, that's pretty much all. Wow. She was really up for doing. But she was actually she looked really good and said she's going to start coming in hour or so each day. Hopefully, sounds like she might even be back before the, the 22nd, which was planning on being back full time. So that's awesome. Good. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Very, very good. Well, I guess we're uh, we're up to uh, your guys' reports, please. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, because Deputy Chief Ware has been uh, putting, you know, compiling the, the uh, Activity training and staffing uh, each month. Uh, I felt it would make sense for him to go ahead and uh, report on that, uh, and I will I will report on the other issues that are uh, that are uh, current uh, <coughs> to the district. So at um, right now we we uh, still don't have uh, the engine that was damaged in the winter back. Uh, we did hear from the shop that uh, you know, they got it painted, but they're still waiting on parts to finish uh, getting that put together, back together and they didn't give us a delivery time. Uh, we did have um, the uh, squad truck was delivered uh, last week and uh, we are busy getting that outfitted so it's in, in, in place. Um, the one thing that uh, was kind of delayed on that uh, is we are going to um, essentially lift it and put larger tires, uh, super single tires on it so that it better for basically backcountry use uh, and that uh, unfortunately is probably not going to happen until the fall but uh, you know we're not planning on taking the other rescue out of service uh, until probably close to the end of the year uh, with the current schedule. It's too bad we can't test it tonight. Yeah no kidding yeah we need those flotation tires. <laughs> <laughs> so is that going to require a chassis change or just the tires? Uh, it'll be the tires uh, and 
you know, the, the tires themselves will lift it, but I think we're going to ask them to also lift it a little bit more. Uh, I think it's probably going to be needed just to just to make sure that they, you know it clears the, the tires effectively because they are quite oh, a bit Yeah. Um, I had. September as the estimated time for the rescue pumper, uh, but actually about uh, 20 minutes ago, I heard from them that uh, they are projecting that to be delivered on uh, October 1st now. So okay. they had originally said August, and I laughed at them and said, well, that'll probably mean October, right? Uh, that seems to be the way that goes, so it sounds like they're on schedule for what we expected. So uh, we did, um, we sent the, uh, the bidder instructions uh, over to uh, Adele Reister to review, make sure that everything is good to go for the station remodel. And I have not heard back from her yet on that, but I just got them off to her yesterday evening. So it, uh, it may take a couple of days, but uh, the construction documents are, are ready to go on that. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, email, uh, you know, there's going to be an additional cost uh, with the installation of the sprinkler system. And uh, we really are not going to know what our cost is going to be until we start getting bids back. And in particular, that's uh, in part because you know, construction is going up at a pretty, pretty rapid rate, the cost of it, because of uh, everybody's building right now. And um, some of those things, like the, the, the sprinkler system, will be a design build. So that will require that they actually you know, design it and figure out what, what needs to be put in to, to make that work. Is that going to cause a further delay getting that installed? I think it's going to add time to the project. Um, you know, I, I think that's inevitable. But I mean, you, you'll still need the temporary living arrangement yeah. during that period. Yep. I don't think it'll add a lot of time in terms of the work up there, uh, but you know the, the biggest costs in this whole project are actually the ones of, of taking care of the water system, the uh, you know the boiler, which is really on its last legs now, and uh, obviously the asbestos removal. So you know, if we were if we were to take all of that out, it would have been a pretty simple project. But uh, those are all things that would have had to get done, whether whether we did the project or not. So you know, we're going to get get them out of the way and hopefully end up having heat in all the rooms in the building again at some point. Um, and, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, I do think that, you know, our original estimates on the cost are going to be pretty significantly low. Uh, but I think that we also are in a position where we can We've got the funds to go ahead and do this, and they're really, it's really necessary whether, whether we had done the project or not. Um, so we've got, uh, with uh, paramedic favors, um, decision to move on to uh, another job. We now have three positions open, and uh, we are going to be interviewing for those on uh, Saturday and on Thursday. Uh, we have 10 applicants for the one officer position, uh, so we think we have got a good shot at finding a good good applicant there. Um, the paramedics a little more problematic in that we only have five applicants for two open positions, uh, so that uh, is really pretty low uh, for you know for a strong hope of, of filling both of those positions. But did you did you put out a separate announcement? We did not because we'd already started, uh, and you know when we sent that out, it was that we had one opening plus uh, you know we were planning on establishing a list uh, for anticipated future openings. Why do you think we had so few? The two factors. One is that uh, you know with uh, the Denver Metro area bouncing back, you know all the departments have been getting their next year's assessments and they're looking good so there's a lot of hiring going on right now. We get notification of other departments that are hiring uh, pretty much two or three times a week right now. So there's a lot of competition for, for employees 
which wouldn't be a problem if we were hiring entry-level firefighters, but paramedics are another story. Um, do, you, do you expect that we'll uh, need to raise our, our uh, rates, shall we say? Yes, because that's the other factor. I mean, people look at our, our salary rates and they're, and they're below standard uh, for the area. So I think we're going to we're gonna have to bring those rates up to, you know, get more, more applicants in. What's the average differential between here and Denver? Um, I haven't looked at it lately, but I would say that we're probably in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 percent below, um, at least. Are, you, uh, are we in any danger of losing any of our personnel? Yes. Um, you know, uh, obviously, we're, we're losing paramedic favor because she took another job down the hill. Yep. Um, I would say that that that's going to always be a possibility. Well, you know, I mean, 30 to 40 percent to some of the smaller departments down there, but then you go to Denver or something, and they're upwards of 50 percent uh, higher salary rates. So. And would it be reasonable that perhaps for the, I'm just asking, for the next uh, meeting that we could have this be a topic and have enough data that we could actually make a decision? If that's not reasonable, feel free to tell me. I, yeah, I, I think that, that we can do that. Uh, um, you know, I think that it's probably you know what we're going to be looking at is an incremental increase. Um, but uh, yeah, that that is something we can we can certainly discuss next meeting. Okay. Given the awkward position we're in, um, is there a possibility that the chief could be given discretion? Actually, take this up because if he has got the time, I think, to I, think I think I think if, if, if he can demonstrate this within the budget, I think that's his decision. I think in terms of the pay rates and things like that, it's I just a matter of just a matter of integrating it into the financial plan. Yeah. And as far as the board goes, I don't know that we've ever approved any salary scales. I'm not I agree with that. If that's the case, then I think we should go ahead. You should go ahead and do what you need to do. You're, you're comfortable with that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, we our numbers for next year prior to appeals are coming out at 14 uh, percent, uh, which is a pretty significant uh, jump upward. Um, after appeals, I think it'll still be in the neighborhood of of 10 percent or or above. I don't think that, that we're going to see really a lot of um, um, a lot of successful appeals, to be honest, because the real estate market is actually going up quite a bit faster than that right now. I think that they didn't uh, pick a, a really a very high number. They were conservative. I, w I, w I would say so from the looks of things. Yeah. Um, except for my house. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, then mine went up 40%, you know, which didn't make a lot of sense. Really? Yeah. Oh. So, um, it's probably because I'm living there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that <has> <laughs> Clearly, that's the, that's the reason. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that we're going to have some uh, space in that. Um, you know, I did, uh, I have been uh, talking with uh, Adele about uh, the taper limits uh, because uh, under when the department debruced, uh, there were, depending on the language that was used, it would either still be subject to the 5.5% increase or not. Um, unfortunately, looking back through the district records, uh, we are, we have very, very poor records between 1994 and 2004. There was a long period there of a lot of turmoil in the department and uh, very, a lot of that stuff is just missing. I wonder if our past legal counsel we have might all, have some. We have all the records from his office, but uh, he was he was on during part of that, but there was also some changes in the yeah. counsel during that time. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing that I did find was a statement in the minutes that was a report from Tucson about uh, the ballot language that said that it did comply with the, it did uh, remove the 5.5%.
but we don't have the actual ballot language to confirm that. Uh, so, what's the state know that? It, uh, nothing before, uh, nothing before I started was filed on the, on the state's website. No, but I mean, at some point, somebody had to make a determination. Right, it was, right. It was made by the Division of uh, yeah. Local Government. So if they did it. Right. So we're going we're gonna to pursue that, and also we should be able to find the ballot uh, if we go back and look at uh, county records, uh, the ele elections office. So we're going to have to make a, make a trip down there and search uh, the records to, to confirm that. Uh, it sounds like uh, we are not going to be subject to the 5.5% limitation, so that'll we'll have the flexibility to decide on, uh, on the appropriate budget amount. Okay, so um, another uh, topic that uh, has come up, we are, you know, the, the Mountain Area Fire Department's received a $700,000 grant to basically link all of the com uh, communication system together and have a single uh, dispatch channel that will cover all of the mountain areas of Jefferson County. And we've been working on that project. And through that, we uh, have been partnering with uh, IREA, who is actually interested in connecting from Conifer Mountain over to Riley and then down to their substations on 285. So they actually had approached us to ask about installing microwave at, up at uh, Conifer Mountain, which was perfect timing for the other project. Uh, so we are pursuing that. and. Uh, we're anticipating at this point that we're actually going to install microwave panels directly on the, st the station up there. Not uh, on the tower. Not on the tower because uh, IREA actually sent engineers out and they did a survey for us and reported back and said that the tower is, uh, is currently overloaded and uh, is not suitable uh, for even the equipment that's on it. Um, so the, that, and that tower had been put up by the uh, Colorado Repeater uh, Association, which is uh, the HAMS, essentially, and it's their primary tower from covering from Fort Collins all the way down to Pueblo. That's the way they, they communicate back, you know, up and down the front range. Um, the, which is great. I mean, they had originally installed the tower uh, and paid for the tower going in, uh, you know, and the district, uh, you know, got the benefit of being on it. Uh, the report basically came back and said, though, that to reduce the loading on that tower to what the tower is rated for would require removing everything except R2 antennas, uh, which means all the computer, uh, the Colorado Repeater Association, and uh, WhisperTel, which is currently uh, a tenant on there as well. Uh, they also came back with an estimate that replacing the tower is going to be $150,000 um, to bring it up to speed or up to current uh, standards. But with that, we could still mount microwave on the station. It still wouldn't be on the, we'd spend that, or somebody would spend that money just to bring it up to where it is now. Right, Nothing exactly. Yeah. Um, is, it, is that our dime or is this? Well, we're kind of we're not really sure on that uh, because you know the way the the grant or the proposed system is working out for the mountain areas, it's actually instead of going off Conifer Mountain as uh, we'd originally envisioned, the engineering came back to say that going off Riley Peak would be more efficient because it would cover our district plus it would cover Inner Canyon, uh, and right now that requires. You know, two antennas in Inner Canyon's district, you know, plus R. So it would reduce by one site the cost of the project. Uh, so if that's the case, then the grant money would not go toward paying for our tower. Now, IREA may have an interest in us upgrading that tower because while we are going to be able to connect to Riley Peak and to Devil's Head uh, from our station, we will 
probably not be able to hit the substations down in, in Aspen uh, Park, which means that they're going to want a higher location for that. So if that is the case, they may contribute some toward the cost of replacing the tower. So you're going to have a microwave link to Devil's Head? Right. And then you're going to have a repeater set up there for what, North Fork? For North Fork, Fork. right. Yeah. And hopefully we're actually also looking at partial funding from Denver Water Board on that because they would like to actually connect to, uh, to uh, Devil's Head. Uh, so, and th this system would uh, connect all the way from look from Smoky Hill out in uh, Aurora to Lookout, up to Squaw, Bear Mountain, Conifer, down to uh, Lindo, down in uh, Indian Hills, and then out to Devil's Head. So it would be a pretty, pretty wide area network, uh, which would be great, you know, uh, but it doesn't take care of our tower situation. So pending not getting any funding from uh, you know either of those sources, we'll have to make the decision about whether to invest in upgrading the tower and then uh, starting to charge the repeater association appropriately or essentially evicting them to get the tower back down to uh, you know to its low limits. And what's uh, Whispertel's uh, part in this? I mean, besides making use of it, they pay for this at all? They, their agreement with the district, which was set up by Chief Dolan, was that they connected uh, the station up there and they provided um, uh, internet connections in exchange for the space on it. They're not providing internet connections anymore? No. We, uh, we dropped the internet connection. And, uh, but we have not renegotiated that contract. We, we have been in discussion with them about charging them 400 a month for their, uh, their <coughs> space on the tower. Usage. Right. Uh, but at this point, we have that on hold until we decide whether we're going to continue uh, to have them as tenants on the tower or, you know, and uh, do the upgrades or if we'll, you know, basically drop back to the middle. Do, do we own the tower? We do. The, the Repeater Association put it in, but, uh, but we own it because at the time, they, they um, the district required that they leased it over to the district uh, rather than continuing to own it on our property. So, so that property is ours? Yes. Yeah, it's right at uh, Station 3. So it's actually a really convenient location because the uh, radio equipment is right in the station. It's very secure, it's got a lot of space. Uh, it really works very well for that respect. Uh, you know, I, I think at this point, you know, the Repeater Association's had 15 years of use on that tower, so their donation of the tower uh, has, I, I don't feel that we have any uh, obligation to continue without uh, you know, renegotiating. 15 years in exchange for the tower was probably but IRA chip Right. If if IRA needs to use the tower, they would be willing to pay part of it. Uh, so you know, potentially there would be four agencies contributing, uh, and then possibly what we could get for uh, you know, from uh, you know grants. But it's still a very large number. You know, to, I don't know whether whether what we can charge the you know tenant users plus what we would get from IREA would be uh, sufficient to, in, to for the investment that's going to have to come down to sitting down at the table and Is there an that. alternative to rebuilding that tower versus putting something up on the building the uh, we really need to be up where we're at because uh, there's a big rock behind the building, oh. and if we drop down to that, we would lose coverage out toward Windy Point. So that's where we are. We don't have we don't have numbers yet, but uh, that's obviously going to be going to be an issue we're going to have to deal with here this summer. Okay. And um, the only other thing is that we're. We're approving the mutual aid agreement uh, tomorrow morning in Vail, so that uh, final.
finally, it finally is coming to fruition on that. So, very good. Thank you. All right. Um, in May, we responded to 105 calls. Last year in May, we had 103 calls, which was a big deal. We noted in the minutes it was a big deal, and now breaking 100 calls is seeming kind of the norm of this year. Um, we're still on track for a record year. Uh, we had three fire incidents, chimney rubbish, 38 EMS calls, uh, 15 motor vehicle accidents, five down power lines, and those were all attributed to uh, trees falling on the lines, which we'll probably end up with more. That was right around that early part of the May month where we had all the rain and the ground was softened. 30 service calls and 14 fire and seal alarms. We did use Platte Canyon four times for mutual aid, never green once. Uh, we provided mutual aid to Platte Canyon twice and North Fork and Inner Canyon once. Our average response time was 9.05, which is down almost 50 seconds from last month, which is pretty good. Uh, I know that everybody's been trying to get out the door a little bit quicker. And we had 39 transports and one helicopter transport. Uh, volunteer firefighter EMTs logged 641 hours of staffing at Station 1. Average turnout was four, and in training in April, we had a pretty big month. We had 1,284 hours of training logged because wow. we had a couple big classes. We, uh, we had a rigging for rescue class. We brought in an outside uh, instructor who's kind of set the bar and essentially helped write the book on technical rescue. And we had a five-day class that we hosted here. We got eight of our members through the class and two members from other agencies. And then that was actually the class that Captain Parks was speaking out when he sent out the email where we had that uh, rope rescue of the motorcycles five days later, which... I was going to say, was that for the motorcycle rescue? Yes, it was literally, I think it was four days prior, five days, it was like, you know, less than a week prior, and then most of the people that responded on that incident were in that class. That's oh, why everything that's went like clockwork. It was great. great. Um, and with the increased traffic at Stomp, it's going to pay off a lot this summer. We also had uh, Cassie Guy, we sent her to Honeywell to be certified to repair a bunker gear. We do most of our repair in-house. You know, we've got a sewing machine, and I used to be responsible for it. Now in this position, I just don't have time for it, so we have her, and she's in charge of our, she's gonna start doing a lot of the sewing and repairing. And she also passed her national registry, so she'll be one of our new ALS providers. She's the newest paramedic. Very good. And that is all. Thank you. Fantastic. Any additional questions, guys? Okay. Oh, uh, what about the uh, air compressor? In process. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, we did. We have. Uh, we got the final the award documents from the state. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, so that uh, uh, we got a purchase order uh, out for that. Um, the bunker gear. We're waiting on uh, scheduling to have someone come in and measure the rest of our folks for bunker here, and then we'll make the order for that as well. So we should see the air compressor sometime this summer. And uh, okay, just sell the old one or just dispose of it? We can certainly put it up for sale. I think it's going to go for a very minimal amount, if at all. It may just end up being scrapped because it's 25 years old. It'll be more of a construction air compressor. I mean, it, yeah, that's about it. It's it's not going to be suitable for someone to take as a breathing air compressor, um, you know, at its age. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So, Chief, are you walking us through the uh, new business item here? Uh, yes. Uh, so, under new business, we have the, uh, the circulatory uh, uh, Colorado <coughs> Firefighter uh, Heart and Circulatory Trust agreement. Uh, if you'll recall, uh, the um, state legislature passed a bill uh, last year, a little over a year ago, that essentially set up, set up a trust account for uh, heart and stroke um, for firefighters. And uh, this is actually a, a good thing for the, dip, the departments in the state because by setting up a, a trust that uh, the state invests in, it um, reduces our workers' comp risk uh, versus you know the, us having to cover the potential for um, you know heart attacks on, on duty uh, by firefighters. 
Uh, so the um, part of the, the responsibility for this is that we sign on to the uh, agreement and we are required to by state law. Uh, and we uh, it, you know, have to pay for each covered firefighter into that agreement, but the state reimburses us 100% of that. Uh, so, so essentially it's, it's a require, requirement uh, that we, we pass that resolution and it's again at no cost to the district and it's, a, it's actually going to be a savings to us in terms yeah. of keeping our workers' comp uh, costs down. And by the way, our, our workers' comp costs have been dropping finally. Um, you know, with uh, you know fewer accidents over the last Good. couple of years than, than in previous years. So Good. that's great. That's excellent. Yeah. So you need a motion. Uh, yes, we'll yeah, need a motion uh, to approve that resolution. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And that's the document. That Chief, can um, Greg sign a lieu of mic, or do you want to hold off with the mic? I think I think he can sign it. All right. All right. Very good. Do we have any old business then to cover? Not this time. Okay. How about uh, citizen issues? All right. In that case, I would take a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I totally forgot about another thing that came up okay. today. Okay. Which is the cistern out of Woodside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we found out finally today, you know, that, that cistern which collapsed several weeks ago. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've been digging through all of those old boxes of documents and still have not found anything other than at one point in 2000, uh, there was a cistern that collapsed out in Woodside. And apparently, uh, there are eight cisterns that were installed by the fire district back in the 70s. <coughs> and that one that collapsed in 2000 was one that had been installed by the fire district. And we found out this afternoon that the one that collapsed uh, recently was also a uh, you know, 40 year old cistern that the fire district had installed. I spoke with the owner, uh, and um, while you know, the people out in that neighborhood would like to have the cistern there because it improves their uh, fire insurance readings. Um, my recommendation is that we hire a contractor to go ahead and remove the cistern and fill the hole in. Um, you know, the, the fire district started to get into the cistern business for a very short period of time uh, and then uh, got out of it. And, uh, you know, the cost of putting in a cistern is, is about thirty-five thousand dollars. Wow! Uh, and the only place that we have a, only one neighborhood in the district that has fire district provided cisterns. Uh, I don't think that it's uh, equitable or cost effective for the fire district to install cisterns throughout the district. Uh, that would run into a considerable amount of money, and I don't feel that it's uh, equitable to the rest of the citizens that we put $35,000 into replacing a cistern in Woodside when we don't provide cisterns in any other neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is that we're gonna go ahead and hire, um, hire uh, you know, a sailor or, or someone to fill the cistern in and uh, basically vacate the easement uh, that we have been granted back to the property owner. So do you need us to make a motion tonight on this? I, I would re request a motion on that, yes. Okay. I move that we uh, uh, go ahead with filling in the cistern in Woodside, Woodside. and uh, so divest you know. ourselves of further yeah. uh, contact with cisterns. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and that's all I have. Okay. All right, very good. So back to, uh, I think we're ready to adjourn then, if someone would make that motion. So moved. And second. As well. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right.